it's helped you make the decision to like, no, I'm here, I'm going to do this? Um, I guess a while ago I decided that if I didn't do something, I was going to die. Welcome, everybody. We are here today with my friend Richard, and Richard has been uh, working hard the past few months to really make some changes in his, in his health, um, and it's been extremely inspiring to see uh, some, you know, I'll let him explain more of what he's done, but today, uh, you know, one of the main themes we want to talk about is, uh, you know, if you're maybe struggling to start at a gym or trying to figure out how you can start with exercise, we're really going to dive into that. Tell me what kind of got you interested in, 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 in hopping on this call in the first place <clears throat> and what you want to kind of dive into today. Well, um, a while ago I decided that I needed to do something about my weight. I was talking to my doctor and things were getting, for years, uh, it was easy just to be overweight and, and still do what I needed to do and, and move on with life. And then things got harder. Um, it got harder to walk. It got harder to do all kinds of things. Um, thing that got me interested in going to the gym itself, I already knew I was going to have weight loss surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and I was uh, kind of in a holding pattern for it. And one day I was on Facebook and this Hunter Grindle guy was on there. <laughs> he was going to do some push-up challenges. And so I started watching them. And I think I watched every single one of your of your push-up challenges for all the days. Yes. Um, and then you had a contest <clears throat> coming up. And I said, oh, what the heck, I'll, I'll try it out. And then and I got in. And um, I actually started with you guys the week before I had weight loss surgery. And I remember going the first day to the to the gym with Brandon. I talked to him on the phone. I talked to you on the phone. And I got to the gym. And I sat in my car for 20 minutes trying to get myself to get out of the car to walk over to the gym. And it's probably it's a really hard thing to do. Um, when you're very overweight, you you know you, people are watching you. People see you. And what do they think? And what do they see? And what can you do and what can't you do? So it was a, it was pretty challenging to, to start this process out. Gotcha. Yeah. So So you're in the gym or you're in the car for 20 minutes before just like thinking about it, like not really sure. Um, I actually think you sent me a message before, like right after and you were like, I, I almost didn't go in, um, I, if I remember right. And uh, yeah, so so what helped you make the decision to like, no, I'm here, I'm gonna do this? Um, I guess a while ago I decided that if I didn't do something, I was gonna die. Yeah. That was just the way it was gonna be. Um, so I, I knew I had to lose the weight and having the surgery was going to be great, but uh, it wouldn't take care of everything. It wouldn't take care of everything that needed to be done. So finally, I just got out and I went. Mm -hmm. And um, it was great. It really was great. Awesome. So so for you, your fitness sort of transformation began before you were working with us. You had already made the commitment that you're going to do this weight loss surgery. And what, what weight loss yeah. surgery um, did you end up doing? I had a gastric bypass surgery. Gotcha. Um, so, so for those of you know who maybe aren't overly familiar with it, what what exactly is a gastric bypass? It's basically where they take your stomach and they make it from the size of a football to the size of about a quarter of a cup, and then they take your intestines and reroute them so that your your in your food going in goes further into your intestines so that it doesn't have as much time to absorb. Um, some of the stuff into your system to, to, with weight loss too. It helps out with the weight loss situation. Gotcha. Okay. It makes it very hard to eat very small portions. Um, but I've had, I've had no issues with it. And there's a, there's a good deal of prep that goes into that. Like you can't just sign up for the surgery and then show up no, and have I had, it done. I had to do six months of, of social worker counseling, nutrition counseling, doctor visits, um, and, lo and lose weight on my own in that six months as well. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, why do they have you go through like the social work part of it? Like I know it's a it's a big mindset shift, yeah, but and that's the goal. So they want to make sure you're ready for it because for for a couple of reasons. One is because um, it really does change your life. Mm. You don't look at things the same way. You don't look at food the same way. You don't look at life the same way. Another part of it is um, when you're really obese, like I was, and and um, um, it's an addiction, and when you take away one addiction, you sometimes are susceptible to taking on another. Um, mm -hmm. One of the biggest addictions after weight loss surgery is alcoholism. 
mm. people try to t- try to substitute addictions. And so they want to make sure that you're physically and mo- emotionally ready to do these things. Gotcha. Okay. I actually wasn't familiar with that part. I know, I know there's, you know, if they actually tell you like the stats, like a lot of people end up gaining a lot of the weight back, which is also um, a scary thing, but I know you're, you're, know, you're well aware of it. Um, but you've done the exercise too. It's because like people, maybe they get the surgery, but they don't actually change their habits, which is what you're working. Right. It's super there, hard there to people, do. There are people that go into this and I read this all the time in groups and the, they're, they've only had surgery for three weeks and they're already talking about when can I have pizza again? Mm. When can I have chips? When can I have coffee? When can I have soda? If you go into it with mindset like that, you're not going to make it. Mm-hmm. It's just, there's no way you go into it with mindset that I gave. So I love soda. I love Pepsi. And I gave Pepsi up about six months ago. I haven't had a sip of anything carbonated for six months. I don't drink mm. coffee. I don't smoke. Um, I don't do any kind of drugs at all. And you just have to make up your mind that you not, when can I do this again, but that I'm not going to do this again. That's powerful. That's powerful. How, how long did it take for you to say, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Like I'm going to sign up for the surgery and, and do it. Well, uh, I met with the doctor. We talked about it for quite a while. And then, I got the referral and I went to the same, I went to this class. It was in Portland and I got there and I was early and I sat in the car for 45 minutes. Do I get out? Do I go in? I went in, I sat there through this whole course. I filled those paperwork. Um, and it wasn't until I actually went to the first nutrition appointment that I kind of made up my mind that, that I can do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I work with, um, Main Health Weight and Wellness in Portland, and they're amazing people. They they did it. Uh, it was a great a great job. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, where were you? Would you say at your biggest weight, and where are you today? Well, um, when my doctor and I met to just dis- started discussing this again, I weighed. Um, I don't know how much I weighed because the doctor's scale only went to five hundred pounds. Okay. And that's just, and that's what it was at. So um, it was it maxed out. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was at least 500 pounds uh this morning i'm 379.4 pounds dang so um and since, since surgery i've lost about 62 pounds mm-hmm. and since i started with you guys at hybrid fitness i've lost about almost 70 pounds gotcha so yeah you'd started a week before the surgery so you lost right. like almost like 12 pounds in the first week had yeah. your surgery and then you've continued and to I actually lose. Gained a little bit of weight after surgery, so technically I've lost more than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. And you weren't you weren't expect or were you expecting that the swelling right from the surgery? Yeah, it was from it was from the fluid. Yeah. Gotcha. The... Okay. Awesome. Um, so that kind of gives people a background of like what brought you here, what kind of got you started, um, and so now how how long are you out from surgery? I'm. I'll be seven weeks on Tuesday. Seven weeks on Tuesday. Awesome. Um, so tell me like how things have changed now, now that you've gone through the surgery, as far as like your nutrition, your eating, you know, like your mindset. Um, yeah. Hunger wise, I, I don't have hunger at all. I don't, food is something I do because it's time to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have any hunger. Yes. There are things you crave. Like if I was telling someone, uh, I live with family. They came home with Kentucky Fried Chicken one night. And I smell that chicken, and of course you want to eat it, but I don't yeah. want it. I don't have any hunger for it at all. So I eat because I have to. Um, the, for the first two or three weeks, I was only taking in about a thousand calories a week. Wow. In in food. Now I'm taking in about five to six hundred calories a day, mm-hmm. which is still pretty minor. Um, so wanting food is not an issue. I don't want food. I don't, I don't care about that. The issue with food is how do I get the protein I need? Because I'm not, and I'm on a low carb, high protein diet. So energy wise, it's very difficult to, to live. It's very difficult to maintain a body my size and do the things that I do mm-hmm. on five or 600 calories a day. So how do I maximize that? How gotcha. do I maximize my protein intake to, to have the energy to do, I try to do everything I do in the mornings, because by three or four o'clock in the afternoon, I'm pretty wiped out. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I guess that's why it works because it's such a, a low calorie thing. And like, I would imagine that your energy would, would drop a bit. Um, yeah. Has the doctor or the nutritionist that you're working with set a, a protein goal for you? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm supposed to do 60 to 80 grams of protein a day. Okay. Right now. Um, 
actually, when I went to the doctor yesterday, I just went to the surgeon yesterday and uh, he told me I could up my, my calorie intake to seven to 800 calories a day, um, which is still going to be hard because it's, it's because to me, the calories is, is nothing. It's, I don't want to eat. I don't have a hunger. And when your stomach only fits a quarter of a cup of food in it, then you don't eat very much. You don't eat, you know, you don't eat very much at all. Yeah. So how many meals do you have to break down over the course of the day to get those calories? I eat three meals yep. and I have two snacks. I usually have a snack in the afternoon. And I usually have a snack at night. And that's usually in the afternoon. It's, it's usually sugar-free popsicle, mm -hmm. which is like 25 calories. <laughs> and at night, I have either sugar free popsicle or I have Nick's ice cream because I love ice cream and it, it's Nick's ice cream is amazing. It's very low calorie. It's really, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. And so I have that. So you don't have, you, you don't have to give up the flavors you love. That's the thing. If you're willing to, to dive into how to change things, then you can have the flavors you love. I eat pizza. I just make my pizza on zucchini. Yes. <laughs> I saw that in the group. I saw you made it. Yeah. And so, I, I can still have the flavor I love. I just can't eat a lot of it. So I don't mm. I don't have to sacrifice and eat just yogurt or just protein shakes. As a matter of fact, I can't drink protein shakes. I tried. I can't drink them. So now I'm doing um, uh, unflavored protein powder that I mix into my food. Gotcha. Which works well. Yeah, I was the beneficiary of the uh, the protein yeah. powder. <laughs> that got love. You bought so much of that, by the way. I couldn't well, believe you know, how much. Your doesn't have to have it. And, and they said you sometimes after you have surgery, things can change. So far, that's the only thing I haven't been able to tolerate, which is good. Mm -hmm. So where you're at now, what are the guidelines around uh, like solid foods, liquid? Are you limited at all there now? I'm moving into the solid food stage now. The only thing I'm really limited on right now is raw vegetables. I can't have raw vegetables yet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really supposed to have breads or things like that. Um, I do because I search and search the world over for things. I found some tortillas that I can have. They're only 15 calories, one net carb per tortilla. Nice. So I can have those. I have some bread that I can, I could have if I wanted it that I, um, cause I search, like I said, I search things out. I, this, I go through Walden foods and I buy, mm. I have mayo, but it has zero calories in it. Salad dressings with zero calories. So I can still have flavor and things that I like without, um, sacrificing the protein and carbohydrates. Yeah. Their stuff is good too. I really yeah. enjoy Walden farms. Um, I was surprised that, may that mayo is so good. I haven't tried that yet. Um, okay, gotcha. So you're kind of at the solid food stage. We want to get more protein in it. Do everything we can to keep your energy levels up. But you, the, and the problem is like, you're supposed to be getting it ideally through protein powder, but that's just not working really for you. Right. Okay. I try to, I try to limit the, the artificial protein, the, the protein powders to once a day. Okay. And then try to get my protein. Otherwise, like I, I eat a lot of tuna it has great protein and I eat a lot of canned chicken because it's, I'm trying to work into the solid foods, but like steak, chicken, pork, things like that are, they're just hard to, you have to chew so much. You have to chew it till it's like baby food yeah. before you can swallow it. That doesn't taste very good. So I try mm -hmm. to, I try to figure out a way to get it in otherwise. Um, rotisserie chicken isn't bad because it's kind of moist. Yep. Yep. You're and you're quite the cook, right? Like you're not afraid, like yeah. you like making recipes and all that stuff. Um, have you played around with like Greek yogurt at all? I, I triple zero. I have a okay. refrigerator full of it. Right on. <laughs> it okay. So, so like that's the first thing that I comes to my mind. Vanilla triple zero. And I mix PB2, the uh, powdered peanut butter into it. It's yeah. so good. I haven't done the PB2 with that, but uh, I'm going to have to try that. Cause I love the triple zero. Um, so the other food that I think could work really well, and there's lots of recipes for this. Now I'm not like the recipe guy. I'd probably leave that more up to you, <laughs> but, um, egg whites, egg whites yeah. are I just, actually, I, I, eggs, believe it or not, are on the, are on the later list of things you can eat because eggs, really? scrambled eggs don't break down in your system when you chew them up. Gotcha. They stay fibrous. So you have to, I'm just now beginning to start to able to eat eggs. Okay. So I did just get some scrambled eggs, um, some egg whites, and I actually made a mushroom and cheese omelet for breakfast the other day. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, I mean, that is such a low-calorie food, and it takes up so much space and has a lot of protein. So I think, like, that will open up quite a few options for you because you can do a lot for, with eggs. For you, yeah. you're, you, like, you eat salads because they fill you up. Right. I need to eat things that don't fill me up yes. because I need things that give more, I have to be able to fit more protein in without filling me up. So that's the harder part. Yes, yes. Gotcha. 
yeah, and normally like things that are liquid, you know, are not going to be as filling. Uh, yeah, because liquid liquids just kind of run through your stomach, and, and the other weird thing about having surgery is I can feel food going into my stomach, and I can feel it coming out of my stomach. I can hear it going in and out of my stomach. Oh so, like, wow! Liquids will just run right through your stomach. You're literally just like, whoop, like, yeah. like a straight well, pipe. <laughs> a regular stomach has a sphincter on it, so it opens and closes and lets food out into your. It, it, my stomach doesn't; it has a hole, so stuff just food just runs through. Wow! But on the downside of that, solid foods get stuck mm. in that hole, and then you get severe pains in your stomach. And it, until that food works through, you're in pain. Yeah. And uh, one sure sign that you're getting full, surprisingly, is that you get the hiccups while you're eating and the minute you get the hiccups you know that your stomach's full they can't take any more food wow okay so that's your sign so now you have like yeah. this yeah little uh all right you're full you're good <laughs> now that your calories are increased you probably are going to want to get closer to like well i would say if you were at 60 to 80 you're probably going to want to be like at 90 now if they're if they're like upscaling the ratio the, the, the whole goal they keep you at 60 to 90 60 so to 90. I've, I've been at the 60 category range for a while okay i'm working with dusty and his nutrition groups are really good um yeah I, I was able to bring it up with the protein powders so i'm hoping to get up into into the 80 range now mm -hmm. okay yeah i mean i think i think the egg whites will be big you got the greek yogurt um how how about uh, are you a fan of cottage cheese nope Nope, neither am I. <laughs> I like to throw that one out there, but I'm like, uh. I do, I do try one uh, ricotta cheese. There's a okay. which has quite a lot of protein in it. There's a recipe that's is almost like lasagna with no noodles in it. It's just ricotta cheeses and sauces, and stuff like that. And mozzarella cheese is pretty good. I have a recipe which is like um, very high in protein. I'm not. I need to check on the calories. Like it's very good on the calories, and it's like a sugar-free like Jello option. Or, or like the powder or whatever, and then you do like some guar gum or xanthan gum, and then you do some protein powder, um, and it's like a, it's almost like a goop, like a, I don't even know, but it's so good. It's like a, it's like a protein jello or not jello, uh, pudding. Oh wow. Um, so I have I'll, made some some uh, sugar free pudding and mixed protein powder in it. <laughs> yeah, it, the, that's basically what it is, and what the. Uh, what, oh, but you can also make bars out of it, like freeze pops. So with, oh, the, wow. with the xanthan gum or the guar gum, you put it in like one of those popsicle molds. Yeah. You freeze it, and then you pull it right out, and you've got it like this. And you can make it out of uh, protein powder. Cottage cheese can also be used in it. Oh. And so it's not it's not terrible. Cottage cheese isn't bad when you use it in that way. Yeah, I can eat cottage cheese if it's mixed with things. Yeah. I just don't like it that Okay, gotcha. So, I do drink a lot of milk. I found I buy Fair Life milk. Oh yeah, super high in protein. It's really, really good. It's so good. <laughs> so you've been doing better in your protein. We've got like some additional foods that you can add in there. Um, so like now, you know that you've gone through the surgery. You said you're about like a little over a month out. Um, what is like your your goal moving forward? Well. Uh, yesterday, the doctor the doctor told me that my goal weight is 185 pounds. I laughed in his face <laughs> and said, "How about 230 pounds? Let's try that." And um, but he he said that that he thinks that right now I'm in the 99 percentile of of for for weight loss um, for patients. A lot a lot of patients already have started to fail. They've already started to overeat. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how they do it because I couldn't possibly overeat. Yeah. I would be in the bathroom throwing up if I tried to. Yeah. Um, so he thinks that with, I should be able to lose 80% of excess body weight with not doing anything, just being on this, having surgery and going through the diet. So because I'm going to the gym and doing the other things as well, he thinks that I should be able to get down to the 80% excess body weight loss plus. Wow. So he's setting me at 185 pounds. I talked to Brandon today, and we decided 220, 230 pounds sounds a little more reasonable. But yeah. We'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, I mean, like, any progress in that direction is a win. And, like, yeah. hey, you get to 220, like, might as well go for it, you know? But I'm sure as you go along, you'll find, like, where you feel really good. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so that's, like, the weight goal. Um, so if, like, you could break that down in, like, the actions that you want to take moving forward, what does that look like for you? Well, I like I started out doing nothing. I started mm. then I started going to the gym. Then I had surgery. 
then, you know, we started doing more things at the gym and Brandon takes his little bar. He loves to do my little push up bar and move it down lower and lower every week. And, and we do, you know, we're, we were doing three reps of everything. Now we're doing four where we were doing one set of everything. Now we're doing two. Um, we go, we walk to about an hour, a mile and a half, two miles every day with him, except for what I hadn't mentioned is last Sunday was in a car accident. Mm. So my leg is in a leg brace. <laughs> so that's, um, but I've still been to the gym. I've still gone to the gym every, I haven't missed any time. Um, we just haven't walked. We just done upper body stuff. Um, so I had the two days with Brandon, which is amazing. He's, he's amazing to work with. Mm. And then I also started going to planet fitness. And so that I could use the treadmill and the water massage table. <laughs> you can't be that. Just, just be able to get some extra um, time in. It's, it's, it's for me, I have to be a destination person for me to say, Oh, I'm going to go in the backyard and do jumping jacks. or I'm going to walk down the street. is probably not going to happen, mm -hmm. but to go someplace and do what needs to be done. Then that's a different story. I, I'm pretty good at that. So actually I started week before last at planet fitness as well. So last week I went to the gym five days. Um, this week I went to the gym five days. So that's, that's been going really well as, as well. So keep doing that. Um, and just keep going and, and, and keep looking more recipes up and keep finding out new things to eat. The biggest problem for me cooking anything is that if I cook one recipe, it's good for about 10 meals and who wants to eat 10 meals of the same thing. <laughs> so I throw a lot of food away yeah. because I, I eat it once or twice and I'm like, I don't want to eat this again. Mm -hmm. And these are the small recipes. So I just, it's, I like that. I have a journal right here. I write everything I eat down, everything I do every day, my goals every day, my weight every day, my water every day. Uh, what the weather is every day <laughs> everything Dang. in that. And, um, and I also do it on my phone. I have, I have an app on my phone. I work with, um, I belong to Facebook groups. I just recently joined a men's, um, gastric bypass group on mm -hmm. Facebook. And it's really great to talk to other people that are going through the same thing and how, and what they did and how they do things and how they work. Um, I talked to Brandon, I talked to Dusty, I talked to you. So like, it's a motivation. You have to, I have to be motivated for many, many years. I was at no motivation. I didn't, I didn't put myself in a position to have to worry about what other people thought or did. And that's hard. That's a hard part is putting yourself in a position to walk into the gym the first time. Mm -hmm. The first time I was going to go to planet fitness, I signed up online and I went to go in to do what I needed to there. And I sat in the car and I left. Oh, wow. I didn't even go in. And then the second time I went and I got out of the car and I went in and now it's okay. Um, but it's, it was new, you, it's different in many ways for someone who is basically fit in working on be becoming more fit or building muscle or building this or building that to someone that wonders, am I going to fall on my face when I do this? Yeah. Am I going to be able to lift that dumbbell? Am I going to be able to do this push up? Am I going to be able? I don't know. You know, the, the first day I went to the gym, we did squats and I couldn't walk. Mm. for three days after that i never forget i was it was horrible I've, I've never had such pain in my legs but i went back and we and we kept going and we did and we did more and more and, and it's worked out and so that's comfortable now but it's it's a hard it's hard to take yourself and put yourself in someone else's um comfort zone it's, it's hard to take yourself out of what you where you're comfortable and put yourself in, in with people that are not like you mm -hmm. it's not like i'm going to a you know, biggest loser here where everyone's all overweight and it's, that's the way it is. I'm not, I'm going in to work with someone, just me and him. And, mm -hmm. and it's, and he's really fit and, and, and got muscles and all this other stuff. And, and I don't have any of that. That's mm -hmm. a hard thing to do. Yeah. So going into an environment where you kind of don't feel like you fit in. Right. Yeah. I can, I can see that. I, I spoke with um, a member one, one time and she explained this a little bit to me. She said one of her fears was, and this is this would not just go for the gym, but it would go for any social event. She would always look around to see if she was the biggest one in the room. Um, I have I have never ever gone out to eat by myself mm -hmm. because I think if I'm by myself eating, people are gonna watch me. Oh, he's the fat guy here eating by himself. Yeah, and I've never ever gone out to eat by myself mm -hmm. for that same reason. Yeah. <sighs> so I'm up until recently, I've never had pictures taken of myself. I don't like pictures. Mm -hmm. recently it's getting better it's getting easier because there's something to look at that's progression now you're on a live video <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so that was that was yeah even to just like uh, put everything on the line 
joining the the program that we're doing, I mean, that was probably not an easy decision to make either, knowing that everything would be documented. No. Yeah. Well, so it sounds like for, for anybody that's watching, uh, I mean, there's a few things that I hear here. Like one um, is you've surrounded yourself with multiple support systems. Like if one support system went down, like you've got five others that are there to support you, which I think is important. Um, I've always said like one of the biggest uh, myths maybe, or I don't know, places that you could go wrong if you're starting to work out is is actually relying on a workout partner. A lot of people believe like, yeah, it gives me accountability, but if it's your sole form of accountability, as soon as your partner quits, you quit. And, uh, and I've heard that and so I many times. That, I did that in the past. You it's have. Exactly the same thing happened to me. Oh, gotcha. And that's why like, on Facebook, I created that group. I have a group, my accountability group with all my friends in it. I don't post all, all my weight loss stuff on my regular Facebook page, but on there, I mean, meals, everything I do when I go to the gym, it's all on there. And it's just nice. People will go on and comment on it or look at it or see things. And it's just nice. And I can, and I can look back. It's like, it's like a little time a capsule to look yes. back and see what's happened over time. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I find that's really powerful. And you know, in a year, in two years from now, in three years, they're going to like pop up and it's going to do the Facebook memories. You're going to be like, oh, dang, like, mm -hmm. I don't even remember that. But I, now I do. Um, okay, so you've built a support system. Um, you're journaling a lot. You're keeping track of almost, I mean, your food. Uh, you're keeping track of the weather, your exercise. What else did you have in there? Um, if I, uh, this has... And do I have any food sensitivities? What are my goals for the day? And what are my observations on eating habits? What's my physical activity? What vitamins did I take? Did I take any pain medication? What did I eat for food, for breaks, for snacks, for meals? That's all there. Wow. And how does that like help you day to day? Um, does it motivate you? Does it help you make better decisions later? Um, I think for me, it's, it's, an, it's a form of accountability because... I worked in the medical field for a long time and they mm -hmm. said in the medical field that if, if you don't document something, it didn't happen because mm -hmm. you can't prove it happened. So when <laughs> I write it down, I can't make believe I only ate 400 calories when I ate a thousand. If I write it down, yeah. I can't make believe I went to the gym. If I wrote it down that I didn't go to the gym, I can't make believe that something hurt or didn't hurt. If I did, if it's so, if I write it down, it's there. I can't make believe in five days that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's there. That's powerful. Very cool. Okay. And then, the exercise, um, you've incorporated that. No, did had you done any exercise before coming to our uh, those sessions with Brandon? Yes, yeah, several several years ago, I decided that I was going to lose weight. I on my own in eight months lost a hundred pounds just exercising and changing my diet. Wow. Number one, I live by myself. It's easy to cook for yourself when you live by yourself. Now I live with five other people. That's much more <laughs> difficult. Um, the other thing was I had an exercise partner who we went to the gym every single day. We went to the Y every single day. Jobs changed. We stopped going. It ended. That was it. And mm. I gained all the weight back and then some. So this time I've decided that I, I don't count on other people, but I do. I have, I have the, 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 the support around me, but mm -hmm. it's not one person to take care of that. Gotcha. That's, I think that's, uh, that's very powerful, but, and then more recently, um, not like on your last one, but you know, did you do any exercise, you know, before the one-on-one -on -one with Brandon or is it been, no. that was the first time you'd done something? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. In, in probably five years. And now would you say like most, like, I mean, you're doing strength training, um, mm -hmm. but it sounds like the majority of the work that you're doing is walking, which is awesome. And we do, we do 30 minutes of strength training and then we walk for 30 minutes. Walk for and 30. When I go, when I go to the plant fitness, I've only been walking so far. Yeah. Um, but again, again, it's that comfort thing. It's like yeah. getting off the treadmill and walking over to a piece of equipment and <laughs> trying to use it. It's just, it's just, you know, you feel awkward sometimes. So you just gotta, gotta do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people underestimate like how powerful walking is and, and, um, you know, like, you have a, a personal trainer in this case, which is, which is helpful. Um, but like, it's not necessary. If you just said, I'm going to walk consistently, um, I think you would still see much similar results. The strength training is just beneficial. You get like, again, the destination, you get the additional accountability, the right. support from Brandon, and it does help, you know, work your muscles and maintain or even build your strength. 
But I think as far as weight loss goes, and if you didn't have a trainer, I think anybody anybody could do the walking. Um, you don't need a you don't need a, a trainer. You don't need uh, fancy equipment. Um, and and Becca, who's also going through the same program as Richard, um, she walks every single day. You know, out of her entire week, uh, you know, she works with me for one hour. Um, but over the course of the week, she's probably doing seven hours or eight hours of walking. So the majority of that is walking. You know? I actually messaged Becca on one of the real I said, Becca, did you really go for a walk today? <laughs> she said, yeah, I really did. I said, you're better, better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> every morning or not always every morning, but every day she sends me a picture of her steps in the email. She sends me a picture of her steps and her weight. And uh, she also is, is also keeping a food journal um, that I have access to, which is, which is cool. So those are like some consistencies that, that we're seeing. Um, so we've got the the social uh, and the accountability. We've got the keeping a journal. Um, what else? What else am I missing that you feel like has been key for you? I think the, the biggest thing for me was me, my mind. No one can do this for you. Mm. You have to make up in your mind that you're going to do it that you're not going to try to do it. You're not going to attempt to do it. You're going to do it, whatever it takes. Um, like I said, car accident this week, you still got to go. Still got to go to the gym. Leg brace on, still got to go to the gym. Um, yeah. I was actually, I was released from the hospital on a Wednesday and I was back in the gym Friday morning. Wow. So we only walked, but but I was still there. Commitment. Like just listen to the words that, that Richard's saying. Language is extremely important. How you talk to yourself, you can say, you know, I can, I'm going to try to do this, or I, I will do this. You need to change it to like, I am doing this. Like, this is what I'm doing. Um, because if not, you can say that forever <laughs> and it won't actually happen. You know, um, there's a great book called atomic habits and it talks about, uh, identity and, and, uh, it uses a comparison of, uh, two people who had recently quit smoking, you know, and they're put into a similar social situation. One guy is standing outside or whatever, and a guy asks him for a smoke, and he says, uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to quit smoking. The other guy says, no, I don't smoke. Now, which one is more powerful? When you say, I don't smoke, like in your head, you are not identifying as a smoker, but when you say, I'm trying to quit, you're still a smoker in your mind, and I think that can go the same with here, and it sounds like what you tell yourself in your head, I mean, that's what you're doing. Now, do you find still you talk to yourself otherwise? I feel like that would happen. Or yeah, I, I talk to myself all the time. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> and, I, 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 I do. I, I really look at, you know, and it was kind of like I had a birthday recently. Mm. And for my birthday, I, my, for my birthday, I got Greek whipped yogurt birthday cake style. I mean, it was, so it was like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm really okay being around I, in the beginning. I didn't know if I was going to be, but I'm okay going downstairs and my family's having cheeseburgers and hot dogs and whatever for dinner. And I, if it, if it, if I feel like it's too much, I walk away and I yeah. go back to my room and do what I need to do. Um, so in my, in my mind, there's no, I wish I could have, there's no, I'm not going to have it. I'm not, don't mm -hmm. want it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, the only thing I, you know, I, I really, because someday I'll be able to have is a lobster. I want lobster again, mm. but right now I just can't eat it. <laughs> but um, I will be able to. Mm -hmm. So and the lobster is really good for you. It's really good. It's a really good protein in it. So I'll, that'll be good. Um, I'm looking forward. You know, I'm looking forward to the day that I can go to a store and buy clothes. Mm. That I don't have to order clothes online because it's something that fits, or I don't have to wear. You know, I haven't worn a pair of jeans in a long time. Mm -hmm. Because they just don't, um, it's either hard to find the right size or they don't fit right or this or that or the other thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking forward to that time um, when I can do do that, when I can go to a store and I can buy something from a store instead of ordering online. Or I can I can go to a carnival and not worry about the ride. Am I going to be able to have the, you know, this, the harness thing fit me in a ride or, mm -hmm. or you know, lots of things like that. Yeah, it's... It's interesting just hearing that because I don't think I always like realize like 
realize what could be going through your head or or anyone else's head you know if I think you that's part of the fear too you, yeah. you have this fear that you're not going to be able to do this because of your weight so you just don't you don't you don't put yourself out there to do it because you don't want to look like an idiot when you go someplace and can't do something or you can't buy something or you mm. can't fit in something yeah it it ends up having a bigger effect on your life than that that one thing there's, like there's for a long time there were many cars i couldn't drive people's cars because their seatbelt wouldn't fit mm. my car would Mm -hmm. But some cars, depending on brand of the car, it wouldn't fit. Or I couldn't, you know, the seat back, I couldn't fit and all this other stuff. So, like, if you want to go on a trip or something, you know, a road trip, you're like, ah, oh, am I going to have to drive? Like, or you're thinking airplane. about that. You have airplane. to ask them to extend it for the seat belts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot that, that, uh, that you don't think about if you haven't been in that position, for sure. Right. So, so, for somebody watching who maybe has not been to the gym for a while or... Uh, you know, if they're in a similar position where they're just getting started, um, what would you say to them? Like, how, how would you encourage them to, to, to keep going or to get well, started? First, don't talk yourself out of it mm. because that's what most people do. I've done it. We've all done it. We talk ourselves out of doing things. Um, it's like being a procrastinator. You, you, you find reasons not to do things. You justify not doing something. Mm -hmm. um, when, once you've, once you've made up your mind, you're going to do it, then follow it through and just and go for it. Um, don't be afraid of it. Um, do what you can do and don't be afraid, afraid to fall. I think I posted, I posted something recently that Henry Ford actually wrote that, um, when you feel like you're up against it all, remember that planes take off into the wind. Huh. They don't take off with the wind. They take off into the wind. So it's, you're not, it's not always going to be smooth sailing. It's always, it's not always going to be my second or third day at the gym with Brandon. I'm going along. I fell flat on my ass <laughs> and he's he, he almost had a heart attack. Like what's wrong? My knee just gave out and I fell, I fell down and mm -hmm. I got back up and we kept on going. I was fine. I didn't get hurt, but um, I think it scared him more than me, but he's, it's things like that are going to happen. Um, you're going to get embarrassed. You're going to things it's okay though. Um, you just got to think of the, the goal at the end of the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. It sounds like some of the fears that you may have, you almost need to expect like, all right, like this very well could happen. Like it's going to happen. And you just need to come to terms with like being okay with it and knowing that, look, you might have to go through some of that in order to get to where you want to like be. Going to the doctor and having a physical, you know what the doctor's going to do when you have a physical. Yeah. You not, may not be comfortable with all this. <laughs> you know what's going to happen. You just have to go in and do it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're, uh, and then you're better for it normally. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Awesome. Um, any, any like final thoughts or, or things that you want to say or. Um, I just think that you probably the biggest thing anyone can do is surround yourself with people that are going, that are not necessarily going through what you're going through, but that are going to be um, like a positive role model for you mm. in some way, one way or, and that may mean fitness wise. That may mean mentally wise. That may be cooking or healthy eating. It's all kinds of things. Um, I think I've written to you many times. What's your next challenge? What's your next challenge? Because <laughs> those things, keep you going that that's something to look forward to seeing what someone's going to do every day to their inspiration to you um you know working with brandon every day we don't just work out we talk about food we talk about what we're going to eat we, we I, he, I give him recipes he, he gives me ideas for cooking things we talk about stuff like that all the time we talk about video games we talk about all kinds of things so having that connection um helps it just helps make things more comfortable it helps give you something to look forward to you need you everyone needs something to look forward to every day and if that can be if that can be on the same path as your is your fitness goals that's even better mm -hmm. gotcha so having a person there that inspires you and that you can just like talk to about anything or multiple people ideally yeah. Because we know what happens when you have one person sometimes. Hey, thanks okay. for the time. I hope you have a great day, man. And keep up you the too. awesome work.